the final Sunday of 2019, last Sunday. Who came to Christmas Without Discovery? Christmas, Christmas, without awesome service or what? Phenomenal worship experience and musical numbers. There were over 1,800 people that came to our Southwest campus here and over 180 salvations. Can we just give God some praise? Come on, y'all. God is good. And he's moving. It's been an amazing 2019. I always love this, this time, honestly, this ending of the year and reflecting back. It begins very early. I start reflecting. I have rhythms of reflection built in um, to my life because I just, I run so hard. And if I don't have a set rhythm, like, hey, you better reflect right here, I just won't reflect at all. Anyone else like that? Just like, go, 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 go. So I have these rhythms of reflection. And so at this time, I'm, I'm like, I'm hard uh, already looking ahead because I've looked back. But as I'm looking out at this crowd, I'm overwhelmed, man. I'm overwhelmed at how good God is. And I'm overwhelmed at the, at the life change that, that is staring at me right now, at the marriages that have been restored, the souls that have been purchased, the, the addictions that have been eradicated, strongholds that have been loosed. Like, I am overwhelmed at what God has done. Has God been good to you in 2019, you guys? Amen. Amen. I'm excited. I really am. And, 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 and we do the programming of our year intentionally to help take you on this journey of, of life change. So to get to the end of the year is always a beautiful, a beautiful thing. Today, I want to share a word with you. Lord put on my heart called crossing over, crossing over. We're about to enter into 2020. It's, it's, it's coming. And um, how, do we, how do we enter into this season, this new year, um, well? How do we, how do we how do we maybe some things that in 2019 that shouldn't be a part of the ride in 2020, some things that we need to let go of or to distance ourselves from, how do, we, how do we move into 2020 and become the best version that God has called us to be, the best version of yourself? How do we attain to the, 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 the life that God has designed for us? I think for every one of us here, you, we have in our minds a version of us that we know is possible. That we know like there's, there's a version of us that we know is possible and sometimes we hit that mark and sometimes we feel like we don't when we yell at our kids or something like that or when we say things we shouldn't say. And so there is this version of us that I know that you know is possible and that you, you, you know it's there. And I, and, and, and I believe that God wants to take you a step further into your destiny. That God, that God wants you to be the best version of you. How many believe that? That's possible. That's possible with God. He wants to do that for you. And, and so, so Joshua chapter 3 tells this story of the Israelites crossing over um, from the wilderness that they were wandering in into the, into the promised land. And look what it says. This is them after their wandering and experience of wandering. They're about to enter into the promise of God. It's going to be fulfilled in their life. And it says, early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from, that ain't what you think it is. That's a place. <laughs> set out from Shittim. Um, forgive me, Jesus, and went to, it just doesn't sound right, it just doesn't sound right, I don't know why they, they anyway, and they went to the Jordan, where, pause right here for a moment, where they camped before crossing over, they camped before crossing, you ought to underline that or something, why, why did they camp before they crossed, there it was, there's the promise, why not, why not just cross, why not just step into it, why camp before you cross, listen, there is, there is always a season of preparation before revelation. There is always. There is always a season of preparation. God wants to, God isn't just preparing a blessing for you. Hey, hey, listen, he's preparing you for the blessing. Oh, the, the promised land is there. It's there. God has it. But it's not the fact that, oh, there are things that God has for us. There's promises on the horizon. Oh, God is preparing this. No, no, no. It's, not, it's there. God has that for you. He's preparing you for it. He's preparing you. He's preparing you for Revelation, and this is what I hope to lead us into in this season. Starting today is, is a season of camping before we cross. This is, this is why we always do in January, we have 21 days of prayer and fasting. Every January, we, we, we start out the year, and it doesn't have to be just a January thing because there's different crossing over thresholds throughout the year. But for us in the new year, it is. It's an opportunity, really, for a fresh start to, to cross over, uh, if you, uh, if, so to speak. And I want to use this year, I want to use this year to, to camp, to consecrate ourselves, to prepare ourselves, to hear from God, to receive, not just to run up into the new year like, oh, 2020, I got my goals, I got my resolutions, and, and let's go, let's go get it. No, how about we camp before we cross? 
How about we tune in? How about we hear? How about we set our hearts? How about we dedicate ourselves? How about we have a season of consecration, of camping before we cross? That's why they did. That's why they stopped. Just stop right here for a moment. Let's camp. Let's hear from God. And let's cross. Then it goes and it continues. After three days, they camped there for three days. The officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, then you are to move out from your positions and do what? Follow it. Hey, when you're ready, well, look, let's camp before we cross, but when you pick up camp, make sure you're following Jesus. Hey, when you're ready to pick up your camp and cross, make sure you're following the covenant. Are you seeing this, you guys? How beautiful this is before we cross over that there is a time of preparation and consecration. And I'm not moving from here until I see the heart of God, until I hear from God and I see him go before me. I'm not going across this year until I see God go before me and I'm going where he goes. I'm following him. Then you will know which way to go. Since none of you have been to 2020 before. And none of us have been there. We all have goals and ideas and plans and vision and all that stuff. But none of us have been there before. And he says, look, let me lead you into that. Let me lead you. As you cross over, let me lead you. So Joshua told the people, here's what we're going to do. We're going to consecrate ourselves. Really starting today with our minds. But in next Sunday starts our 21 days of prayer and fasting. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. Of, of why we do that and the importance of doing that, we're going to consecrate ourselves because, because tomorrow, in, in our tomorrow, God's going to do amazing things. How many believe that, church? And, I, and I, don't, I don't know what 2019 was for you. I don't know what it did to you, good or bad. And it might not, it, there might not be a level of expectation of, of, of the amazing things that God can do. Let me say the amazing things that God will do. In 2020, that may not be your expectation yet, but, but, but if you will camp before you cross, God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, will lift your expectation. He will lift your faith again. He will lift your spirit, your countenance again to hear from God, to get revelation and insight that God will do amazing things in your tomorrow. How many of you believe that with me? Amen. How many of you like to camp? Anyone like to camp in here? Yeah, yeah, I hate it. Just be honest with you guys. I just asked right. That's my sister after my own heart right there. She said, give me a hotel room. Is that, I like the five-star hotels. Give me the five-star. I like to eat in a nice restaurant. You know what I mean? And so I go camping every now and then. And, and uh, I ain't going to lie to you guys. I ain't going camping, okay? I'm just not going to do it, okay? I don't like... I just don't. I, and I'll do it every now and then to, like, I'll show my kids or to have an experience. I enjoy the experience of... But inside, I'm like, get me out of... Here. I can't stand this floor. I can't stand this cold. I don't just give me a heater. Give me some. I don't want to cook my. I just, can I? Can I go? Can we go to the restaurant? It's just down the road. Anyway, so camping for me is not a is not an easy thing, and that, I think it goes to my nature that I'm just I don't I don't slow down easily, and so that's why I said I need I have rhythms of pausing and reflection, intentional rhythms where I throughout not only my day, my week, my month, my season, and my year that I pause and I have reflection built in and I have examination built in like, like systematically. <laughs> I, I have it built in because I won't stop. I won't. I won't camp. I'll go. I'll just keep, I'll just keep going. I'm one of those people that are, I'm in a hurry even when I'm not in a hurry. You know, <laughs> I'm just in a, it's just, I'm, I'll, be, I'll be driving. I'm not in a hurry or rush to get somewhere, but I'm driving like, yeah, you know, you know. and like, if you're in my way, watch out, man. If you just, come on, dude, you like, get out the lane. You know, my wife is telling me, honey, honey, they may be your members, you know what I mean? <laughs> honey, she's trying to protect me, and I'm like, yeah, but I need to teach them something. I need to teach them how to drive. Get out the way. It's not your lane. Maybe you guys have experienced this. You've been at a, have you ever been at a, at a red light? When I'm at a red light, I, and it's a long, it's traffic, you know. I know the light cycle that I'm going to be able to get my green light to cross over the intersection, all right? I know, I've timed it, I'm like, okay, because I'm not going to beat myself up if I didn't get the first light, because I know, I know, because I'm not going to be like, I'm going to get, I'm going to get, no, I know, I'm on the second light. The first one, I'm not going to get that light cycle, second light cycle is mine. If that knucklehead up there. Does not, you know, can I say knucklehead in church? You guys okay with that? That, old, that knucklehead, you know, because here's what happened. You've, you've experienced this. I know you have. The light turns green, and what happens? 
Ain't nobody moving. And I'm here timing it. I'm like counting the time. I'm like, you're messing with my cycle. And, and you know what he's doing too because he's got his phone. He's got his hands like this in his chest and he's looking down. So you know what he's doing. Look, he's chosen that light cycle to not cross over but to be busy doing something else. He's chosen the light cycle. It was green, but he didn't cross over. And, and, and so what I, wanna, I want you to hear today, you guys, is that what we have before us is a threshold that, that hey, church, the light is green and it's time to cross over. And some of us need to, we need, we need to not get caught again. Because there are some things in our life that are the same, at the same place that it was this time last year. Why? Because you got stuck. You're stuck at the light when it was green. It was time to cross over. You didn't catch the light. And so at this time, and here's what I hope to do, church. Because when I'm in that situation, when I'm in that situation, what, what you're supposed to do when they don't go, you're, the nice thing to do is to just go, beep, beep. <laughs> right? That's the nice thing to do, but inside, what do you want to do? <laughs> uh, that's what you want to do, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that today. Today, what I want to do, and, and what I do a lot with you guys, I think, is just, hey, beep, beep. <laughs> hey. Light's green. It's time to go. Okay? And so I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to try not to lean in too much and honk on y'all. But I'm just, today, what I want to do is give you a little, and honestly, throughout the, next, throughout the new year, and this, this next series we'll be doing as well, I'm just going to give you a little beep beep, okay? And, and if you'll permit me to lead you spiritually into this new year, into this crossing over, I just, I want to, there are some things in your life that, hey, beep beep. It's time to cross over. Hey, don't get caught at this. Don't get caught again at this light. It's time. It is time. The light is green, and it's time to cross over. Jesus said it like this in Luke chapter 9. There's a story um, in the message paraphrase of the Bible. It says, on the road, someone asked if he could go along with Jesus. Oh, I'll go with you. So I'm like, yeah, I'm, going. I'm ready for 2020. They even added wherever, I'll go with you, wherever you leave, wherever 2020 come, come, I'll go with you. And Jesus was, Jesus didn't give him a, uh, a little beep beep. He was like, he gave him a curt. Jesus was sometimes a little, he was, Kurt, are you ready to rough it? Because we're not staying in the five stars, Jason. <laughs> That's not, if you want, you're ready, are you ready to rough it? Because we don't stay at the best places, don't you know? And then it continues. Jesus said to another, follow me. And he said, certainly, but, 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 but first, excuse me for a couple days, please. I have to make some arrangements for my father's funeral. Jesus refused. He refused that request, that excuse. First things first. Your business is life, not death. And life is urgent. I got, I got things for you to do. Announce my kingdom. And then still another said, I'm ready to follow you, master, but first, excuse me. Me, I got some things I need to get straightened out. And how many of us just are, we have so many excuses, so many but first. And, 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 and we say, oh, yeah, you know, I would totally do that dream team thing. I would totally do that dream team thing if, or I would totally not only get to a small group, but I would totally lead a small group if I could just figure out my kids first. If I could just figure out my career first, or if I could just get out of this situation, this trial, this trauma, if I could just, it's always going to be just something. There's always going to be something keeping you from the best version of you possible. It's time to stop. It's time to stop making excuses. Because why? Because the light is green. It's time to cross over. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus said, stop procrastinating. Stop getting stuck at the light. It's, it's, hey. And some of you know even what time it is for what areas of your life. You already know the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Stop procrastinating. No backwards looks. You can't put God's kingdom off until tomorrow. Hey, beep, beep. Seize the day. So I want to help you cross over in, in this Last Sunday of the year, we're going to experience a new year before this next Sunday, but we'll begin this, this 21 days on January 6th next Sunday, but I want to help you cross over where, and there, and there are some things 
that, listen, that, that cannot take the journey with you in 2020. There are some things that you need to leave behind in 2019. Like they're not supposed to be, they're not supposed to cross over with you. You're just, you, you need to leave some things behind if you, want, if you want to cross over well, okay? So what are some things we need to move on from to cross over well? Write three things down. Here's number one. We need to move on from old history. Some of you need to go to that, you know, that history bar, you know, and just that clear, hit, delete all. You need to clear the history, the divorce, the bankruptcy, the loss, the hurt, because listen, you're letting it define you. You're letting that, that thing that, that happened, and so, look, sometimes it's not even, it's not the struggle that happened that's even the problem anymore, because it did. I get it. There's, there it gets, you got some stuff in your past, so do I. It's not, it's not, that's not even the struggle. The struggle is how you're carrying it now. It's not the, because it's, look, I, I, I get it. I get we have struggles, and we have history, that's not the problem anymore. What the problem has become that you're still carrying the history. You're still carrying it along with you when you were supposed to cross over. Look what Isaiah 43 says. He says, God speaking through the prophet, forget the former things. And some people see that. I know you go, well, that's so easy. That's easier said than done. How am I supposed to forget things? Like, how am I literally supposed to forget what he is meaning here? Please, what he is meaning here is that you have to remember the right things. So, some of you are remembering, you're memorizing all the wrong things. You, some of you have, you're memorizing all the hurts and the pains and you're memorizing the things in your past and that's why you're, that's why you're miserable, it's because of your memory. It, it, but, but if you were just, if you would just remember the times God got you through, if you would just choose to remember the times where the problem was averted or God brought you through that valley, if you would just choose it, you guys, you need to master your history and not let your history master you. If you'd forget your former things, you would remember the right things and you would rejoice as you cross over. Oh, are you hearing me today? Some of us need to move on from some old history. Forget the former things and do not dwell. Don't sit in that. Don't camp in that. Don't camp in your, don't camp in your history. See, I am doing a new thing. I think that's part of my role as your pastor is because I see it. I see the new thing. Look what he says. It's springing up. Don't you perceive it? Man, I see it in your life, man. I think that's one of my roles to help you see, just to point the way to you, for you. I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland, he says. So don't let your history define you. It happened. You, 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 your history does not master you. You're a master of your history. See, my, 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 my destiny is greater than my history. My hope is greater than my hardship. My purpose is greater than my pain. God's grace is greater than my shame. We need to move on from the old history, if you want to cross over, and we're going to, it's coming, man, but you need to leave some stuff before you cross the threshold. Move on from old history. Here's the second thing we need to move on from. Move on from old habits. We need to move on from old habits. These are our addictions, the things, man, that we've, we've allowed too much of some things into our life, and even too much of a good thing can undermine God's purpose for your life. We've allowed too much of some, of, of, of some things, you guys. Some, some of you are addicted to your phone. Some of you are addicted to the computer. Some of you are addicted to your work. Some of you are addicted to some foods or types or maybe something like that. It could be anything. We all, we all you guys, have, have uh, a bit. What do, we do? what do we do with these addictions? What do we do when we've, when we've allowed too much of something into our life? Here's what we do. This, we built in this fasting in our year. Again, it doesn't have to be just in January. But this is what fasting is. Fasting allows us to not let that thing master me anymore. It's going to be in my, it, I, it doesn't, I don't mind things in my life, but I'm not going to let it master me. Let me, let me kind of share with you one of the things in my life that I deal with. I'm a sweets guy. I like sweets. I like me sweet surrender. I like me some good cupcakes, okay? I like candies. I like, I like it all, but I'm not going to let that master me. Okay, for the last month, it mastered me, all right? <laughs> Sweets has become my master, but not in January, not for 21 days. I'm going to say no to that. I'm going to say no to all sweets. You know why? Because I want it badly. I want it badly. 
okay? And, and, and it's okay, it's okay for it to be in your life, but it's not okay for it to master my life. So there's some things that just, I've got, and, and look, it doesn't need, my, my, my fasting is not your fasting, okay? I, I'm getting rid of all media. I'm, get, I'm not TV, no, no, no shows, no, no nothing. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just distancing myself. And so you have a Holy Spirit. You don't need to choose my areas of fast. You pray about it. It doesn't even need to be food. It could be things that you've allowed in your life too much, and it has mastered you. You crave it. You want it. And some people think that fasting is like, Oh, well, is fasting where you just beat yourself up enough to get God's attention? No, man, that's ugly religion. Fasting is distancing yourself as best as you can from the world to get closer to God. If we want to cross over well, you guys, and start fresh in 2020, we got to move on from old habits and move on from old history. Isaiah 58 talks about it. It says this, is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke. To set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Do you see if you let it, this 21-day experience, this, this camping before crossing, this time of consecration and prayer and fasting can become a powerful, stronghold-breaking, chain-breaking experience for your life. If you, if you let it, church, we got to move on from some things, from old habits, from old history. Here's number three. Move on from old hurts we got to move on from some old hurts because you're wounded and it hurts and again we're letting it define us we're letting those things that person what they did what they said maybe even what you did or what you said and you hurt yourself or hurt other people whatever and you're you, those things are still you're letting it define you what do we do when you're when you're hurt listen you don't camp in your you don't camp out some of us we camp and you camp in your hurt some of you camp before you cross, and you camp in your hurt, and you're doing that thing, and you beat yourself up, and you cross over like you're just dragging it with you, dragging it. What do you do? You don't camp in your hurt. You camp to hear. You don't camp in your hurt. You camp to hear. We, we slow down. We pause. We reflect. We consecrate to hear from God. We cannot take these things. Yes, they happen. Yes, it hurt, but it's not supposed to be part of the journey. Feel it. Go ahead. Learn from it but move on. Hey, beep, beep. It's time, it's time to go. It's time to cross, okay? And that can't go, that can't go with you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, for anyone who's in Christ, look at this, therefore, if anyone's in Christ, if you're a Christian, you don't have that history. You don't have, you don't even have those hurts. You don't even have those, you are a brand new creation. You're not a, a refurbished you. You're not a, a new and improved you version of, no, no, no. You, you are a brand new. That's what marks you as those in Christ are new. You don't have the stuff of the past. You don't have the history, the hurts, the pains. No, you are brand new. The old is gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. That word reconcile means to bring the balance to zero. Thank God that he, he reconciled us. He brought our balance to zero. But check it out. There's some reckon, some of us were holding on to hurts just because we haven't reconciled them. We haven't brought the balance to zero of some people that hurt you. You're still, you're still letting it define you. It's not that it happened. It's that you're still carrying it. That's the problem. The problem isn't even the, the problem anymore. The problem has become you're carrying it because God has moved on. The ark has went. God moved on. And you're stuck at the light. And it's time to move on from these old hurts that we're allowed. Let me say it this way. I can't. I can't start the next chapter of my life if I keep rereading the last one. So what do we, what do, we do when we're defined by our history, by our habits, and by our hurts? Here's, I think it's time to change. Hey, as we, as we get ready to cross over, church, it's time to change. And if you let me, I want to lead you. I want to guide you over this, this next year, over, honestly, 2020, the, what we've planned for you, the programming, the messages, the series, the, 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 what we're pouring in is intentional. It's not just like, oh, yeah, let's just do this. No, there's not one thing, not one part of our program for your life, for your spiritual journey. Look, I'm your pastor. I eat, sleep, breathe, and pray your spiritual journey. I want to challenge you. Four things for you to change and for us to walk into, as we cross over, it's time, it's time to change. 
It's just time, you guys. Here, look at Matthew chapter 5, or sorry, 4, verse 17. See, some of us are waiting for God to change some things, but he wants to initiate change in you. That's the, like, like, that's why we camp, right? That's why we consecrate. God wants to initiate some change inside of us. I was reading Matthew 4, 17 here recently, and, and some, it stood out to me. Three different words or phrases stood out to me like never before, and I wanted to just show them to you. From that time on, Jesus began to preach. What was that time? He had just gotten baptized, which we're having baptism after every service today, which Jesus did as, as an example. He's to follow in his footsteps, to go all in, and to say, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. You can do that today. Jesus did it, and from that time, he began to, pre to preach repent. And that word has a negative connotation from, for a lot of people, church and unchurched alike. Religion has used that word ugly. When you, when you hear that word or see that word, you picture the guy in the cardboard sign, right? Repent, you're going to hell kind of thing. And that's not the word. It's not an ugly word. It's not a bad word. It's honestly one of the most beautiful words in the entire Bible. The Greek of this word is metanoia. And I'm murdering it because it's Greek, whatever. Metanoia, that's how I say it. Meta, though, comes from metamorphosis. Meta, transformation. Isn't that beautiful? That God says, hey, it's time to change. It's time to be transformed. It's time to not only be, to metanoia, to, to change your mind. I was thinking this way. I had these plans. I had these thoughts. I had these goals. I had these ambitions. I, had, I thought about my life this way. I thought about my past this way. I thought about them this way. I thought about, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to re repent. And then the second thing that stood out, I'm going to repent for the kingdom of heaven. And see, that's what it is, man. And some of us, we're, we're the kings of our own kingdom. And you need a new king. Hey, before we cross over, hey, there, needs to be, there needs to be a change. We need to change how we're thinking. We need to change our mind. And we need to change who's king. Because honestly, you and I, you, you've been a terrible king, okay? You've been a bad king of your own kingdom. It's not working. And I need to step away. I need to, I need to step away from the kingdom of me, from the kingdom of Jason Hannish, and submit to the kingdom of heaven to repent for the kingdom of heaven. And then the last word that stood out to me is near. Look, it's, listen, I'm speaking to some of you right now. It's, God is, is not as far as you think he is. And it's not as hard as you think it is. Okay, because some of you have convinced yourself that if I were to go all in, if I give Jesus my life, if I try to make a change, oh, it is so hard. And you've convinced yourself of this, and I promise you, it, 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 God, it's not as, he's not as far as you think, and it's not as hard as you think. That honestly, it's not even on you. It's on him. That he will change you from the inside out. So where do we change? What is the change that's need to happen? There's four areas that as we're preparing to cross over, we're camping before, we're consecrating ourselves. There are four changes that I think it's time to change. It's time to make a change. And these are over this year, honestly, in 2020, I'll, I, I want to lead you in a transformation and a metamorphosis in these four areas. Here it is. Number one, it's time to change what? It's time to get closer to God. Oh, but I already, love, I already love God, Pastor. Great. Get closer. Oh, you love, you, I'm glad you do. So do I. Let's, hey, but let's get closer. Let's get closer to God. I, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm so hungry. I'm so thirsty for Jesus. I want more of him in my life. I'm not satisfied with what he gave me in 20. I'm thankful. I'm content in the sense that I'm blessed and I am grateful, but I know there is more and I want more of him and less of me. Man, you're going to see me. I, I'm saying this right now in 2020. You're going to see me go so hard after Jesus Christ like I just got saved last week. I'm going to be so on fire, so hungry, devouring the word of God, seeking his presence. Why? Because it's time. It's time to get closer to God. It's just time, church. James 4 8 says, Come close to God. Notice that you have the first step. He says, Hey, you you make us come on close, make a decision, make up your mind, change it, change your mind, change your direction. But if you do that, you come close, God says, I'll come close to you. How much do you want? Oh, you're going to take another, okay. Oh, you're going oh, to take another step? You're gonna take, okay, here we go. Oh, you're going to give me that? Okay. And every step you take, every commitment, every, every change, every, God says, you, wanna, you, you can have as much as me, of me as you want of me. Uh, come on close, and I'll come near to you. Wash your hands. I mean, we're going to go through a process, church of consecration. 
where we just get rid of some things, where we say, no, I'm not going to let that master me. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm too close to that, and it's, get, it's drawing me further away from what really matters. I'm just, I'm just not going to allow that to, to happen. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get close to that. Purify your hearts. Your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Yeah, okay, God, yeah, I just, I let some things get in the way. I let my loyalty, I, 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 I said yes to some things in my life and made some commitments that took away, took me away from some, some things I knew you called me to do. I, I, I said yes to some things that caused me to say no to you, God, or, or to, to say not yet, God, or not now, God, because I said yes to the wrong, to the wrong things. You say, Jason, that sounds kind of radical. That sounds a little, yeah, but I think that one of the problems is with Christianity and with, with a lot of us is that we think that it's supposed to be easy. <laughs> hey, guys, if it was easy, you'd already be doing it. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. It's, 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 it I think that for a lot of us, we've, we've made easy the goal. Like, like in our mind, we said, oh, I can't wait till it gets easy. I can't wait till my kids get to a a certain I can't wait till my career I can I can finally call, I can't wait till I get to this certain age or this certain level I can't wait to and you've made easy your goal and and that's a faulty goal it's the wrong it's the wrong goal see you made easy your goal instead of getting close to God and those two things could not be farther apart and some of you got the wrong you've made easy your goal and I'm telling you it's not supposed to be easy it's not. And I'm telling you, it sounds radical. Blah, blah. It takes that. It's going to take that. Look at this. Uh, if I want something I've never had, then I need to be willing to do something I've never done. Hey, if you want to see the best version of you that God has available, the best life, that, the destiny that God has, man, if you want to step into some new things, then you need to start doing some new things. And it's time to get closer to God because you've we, we've allowed some things to take us away. And it's time, you guys. It's time to start shaving off and getting closer to God. I don't know what that means for you. Some of you it's fasting. Some of you it's not. Some of you maybe just, some of you just need to come to church, dang it. Some of you just, what would your life look like if you came to 52 Sundays in 2020? Can I tell you, can I answer that question for you? It would look better. It's, I promise you that. I promise you. If it doesn't, we're going to close the doors because something's wrong. Something's wrong if this ain't working to make you. And look, I can't even, look, this Sunday experience cannot change your life, but it can give you a catalyst. It, it can be a catalyst for you. It can give you desire. It can give you the, the motivation. It can give you even tools. But if you want true life change, you've got to move on to some other things that we have available for you. You have to. This ain't going to do it. Coming to church on Sunday ain't going to do it. It can give you, it can be a catalyst but it can't change. you got to move on to some other changes. What else needs to change? Here it is. Number two, it's time to get honest with a friend. It's time to let somebody know your secrets. It's time to share your secrets with at least one other person. Man, I got news for you. Listen, you are not going to become the version of you that you know you could become. You're, you're not going to be who God has called you to be and do what God has called you to do by yourself. You're not going to even be who God has called you to be with just you and God. You were not designed by God to do that alone. You, you were designed by God. You and I, we work better. Our humans, the way God made us, we work best when we have this, this word called accountability. That's how we work best. It's not bad. It's not, it's not hurtful. It's, some of you, it's, it's like a, you're afraid of that word. You, you are, you're a better you when you're accountable. Trust me. I'm a better me when I'm accountable. I work out a lot better when I'm accountable to somebody when I'm, if I'm not accountable, I may just say, not today. I don't want to wake up. I don't want to do it. I don't want to. I'm going to go ahead and eat that. I'm going to go ahead and shave off it. You are the best you that there is when you are accountable, when somebody knows what really is going on. Can I say it this way? Here's what we need to do. We need to stop pretending. Stop pretending like everything's okay, like we got it all together. We need to stop pretending sometimes sometimes we pretend though because we are lying to ourselves. some of us when we look in the mirror we cannot accept or admit what we see so in order in order before you even step into this change to be honest with someone else you need to be honest with yourself 
So you need to just be honest with yourself and stop pretending like everything's okay when it's not okay. This is the reason why we have small groups here at Discovery Church. We are a church of small groups, not just with. It's not just something we do. It's everything we do. We are a church of small groups. And if you're not connected to a group, I'm telling you, you're going to miss out on the best version of you. You're going to be sitting here the same time next year, stuck at the light with the same issues, the same strongholds, the same habits, the same mountains. You're, well, come on, church. It's time to go. Beep, beep, somebody. Come on. It's time to get honest with somebody. You don't need to get honest with everybody. You don't need to tell everybody your deepest, darkest. I would not encourage that. Some people are just not safe people. I don't care if they go to church or if they are a member. Some of these members ain't safe. Okay, I'm just being honest. I love you all, though. Trust me, I love you all. We're going to work it out. We're going to work it out. But let's be honest. Ain't no, you don't share everything with everybody. But the, God is going to do something. In your, in as you're building relationships, you're walking it out. There's going to be someone who says, you know what, I can, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get honest with this person here. I'm going to start, I'm going to open up a little bit, and then a little bit more, and, then, and, and, and build some trust here. And, and man, I'm telling you, you work better that way. It's time to get honest to not just end up this time next year and still nobody knowing you, nobody knowing the real you or the real struggles that you have. Here's what the Bible says. Confess those things. Confess them where? To each other. Not just to God. Oh, me and God, though, you know, me and God are tight. Whatever. <laughs> Come on, man. That's not the way you work. That's not the way God made you. Sure, talk to God. Hey, man, he... He already knows it, though. <laughs> Confess your sins to each other. And that's the secret to some of your healing. Then you may be healed. See, some of you, you haven't been healed from that hurt, from that history, from that habit. Not because God don't know it. You haven't cried out to God about it. You just haven't told the right people yet. So I want to be accountable with you, to celebrate with you, to walk with you, to, man, church, I want this for you so badly. I want to see you free. I want to see you be who God has created you, destined you to be. And it can happen if you change. If we take this, this opportunity as a catalyst, 2020, to say it's time to change. Hey, if you want to go fast, then what you do is you go alone. But if you want to go far, you got to go with others. I don't know about you, but I don't want to just go, I don't want to get there first. I want to go far. Okay, I want to go far. In order to do that, we need to go with others. Amen? Here's number three. It's time to get in tune with my purpose and my passions. It's time. I mean, we need to change this. It's time for me to figure out what I was meant for, what I was created for, what God purposed me, what passions he's put inside of me. See, some of you have chased purpose and passion, and it didn't scratch the itch. You know why? Because it wasn't your real purpose. It wasn't your real purpose passion. It would do you a lot of good if you would just walk through 2020 knowing I know who I am. I know who God has called me to be. I know what he has purposed me to be. It would do you so much good if you stopped trying to live your life like somebody else and know who God has called you to be. Galatians chapter 6 says like this, that if anyone thinks there's something when they're not, they deceive themselves. If I'm thinking, oh, I got to be like them, or I got to do that, or I got to, then I'm just living a deceitful, deceptive life. Each one should test their own actions. We should have a process where we look inside and we say, God, what did you wire me for? What did you create me for? Then when we do that, we can take pride in ourselves. And that's not a bad pride. That's a good pride of saying, you know what? I know who I am. I know. I'm not shadowed. I'm not rattled because you think I'm supposed to be something different. I know. Come on, somebody. I know who I am without comparing myself to anybody else. That's why I'd like to take you on a journey, church. There is not one part of our programming of 2020 that's, that's just like accidental. It's all intentional. All of it. And if, and if you're ready, if you're ready to go all in, man, then I want you to start saying yes to what, like everything that we, like 21 days of prayer and fasting, just do it. I promise you, it'll be better. Just let me lead you, church. Just do it. Do the 21 days of prayer and fasting. And, and the next month of, after that, in February, we have a unity marriage conference. If you're married, go to it. If you are married, you need to be there because it's intentional. We're going to help you in your marriage get unified, get strengthened, make some commitments and reestablish some covenants. I promise you, just start saying yes 
to God. Amen. It's time. It's time to get in touch and in tune with my purpose and my passions because I don't want to just go through life. We need to grow through life. Last year happened to you, right? You need to happen to 2020. Amen. Here's number four. It's time. It's time to get on doing something greater than myself because real joy comes when I'm connected to my purpose and my passion. Ephesians chapter 2. I got to hurry up here. Ephesians 2. God creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the what? In the work. It's work. You know, I think sometimes I, I do you guys a disservice by not telling you it's work, by talking it up like, oh, you got purpose and destiny and it's, you know, get on the dream team. It's so good for you and all that stuff. And it is. But I think sometimes I do it a disservice because it's work. It's, it's work. I mean, you got you to come a little bit early. You got to stay a little bit late. You have, to, you have to take care of some kids. You have to prepare in advance. You have to, I, I, so you know what? It's work. But guess what? It's a good work. It's the kind of work that, that when you do it and you're done with it, you lay your head down at that pillow and you say, man, that's how you do a day right there. That's how you do a day right there. Because there's some work in your life that will drain you. It'll suck you. It'll suck energy and time and life out of you. But the kind of work that God has for you, don't get me wrong, it's work. It ain't always easy either, but it's good. It's work, but it's worth it. It's work, but it's good. Amen, somebody? Amen. Every year I have a, a word. And I got to close up here, but I have a word. Last year, we said that the year of 2019 was the year of deeper, that we're going deeper in our relationship with God, in the presence of God, that we're going all in, but we're going deeper. This year, we're going all in, but we got a new word for 2020. And I declare 2020, this word, alignment over Discovery Church. What would your life look like if you got in alignment with God? What would your relationships look like? What would your marriage look like if you got in alignment with God? What would your career look like? Your future look like? What would your finances look like? What, what would it look like if you just in every area of your life, you sought to align it to the will of God, to the word of God, that you didn't just run, 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 and go, 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 and do life according to your plan, but you paused. You didn't lean on your own understanding, but you sought God, and you said, God, let me line up with your will. What would your life look like? I declare over 2020, over your life, this is the year that things are getting aligned. In Jesus' name. Here's the last thing I'll give you. I can't go back and change the beginning, but I can start where I am and change the ending. You can't change the history. You can't change your hurts. You can't change even the habits that you had in the past, but you can start right here, right here, before we cross over, and you can get a new ending. Do me a favor. You got one of these communion cups that you came in. Go ahead and take that out. We're going to close the service a little bit differently today. In taking communion, we're going to enter into worship in just a moment. I want you to serve because I don't want you to miss this. The Bible says that before we take communion, we're to examine ourselves before the Lord. And some of you, hey, check it out. Some of you, you know the Holy Spirit's already showing you you're out of alignment. Can I just beat, beat you a little bit more? Come on, church. Come on. Some of you just know, you know that there are some things in your life that are out of alignment. And today, before we cross over, we need to camp and say, God, forgive me. I need to come under alignment again. Can we just pray together before we take communion. Can we just, can I pray for you with every head bowed, every eye closed right now. God, I just thank you right now for your conviction, for your leading. Holy Spirit, thank you. I recognize that there are areas of my life that are out of alignment, that are not under the will of you. It's just not, it's not there. Today, God, I want to get aligned. With every head bowed and eye closed, if that's you and you're ready to get aligned, maybe for the first time, you've never came under alignment with God's will for your life. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you shall be saved. That's the first step of alignment right there is to surrender the control of your life to Jesus. With every head bowed and every eye closed, what you're holding in your hand represents the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Here's what I want to do. For those of you that maybe for the very first time you need to surrender your life to Jesus, those of you that need to realign, you need a, an adjustment today. 
what I want you to do in the count of three, I'm not going to have you come up to the front or, or stand up or anything like that. I just want you to raise your hand right where you are. And if that's you and you're ready to align your life with God's will, you're ready to surrender it to the control of God. What I want you to do on the count of three, I want you to lift up your hand, but I want you to lift up the hand that your communion is in. I want that to be a sign that you're coming under the covenant. You're aligning your life with the covenant of Jesus Christ. You're coming under the body and the blood, the covenant that he has established with you. That today as we camp, as we consecrate, before we cross over, God, adjust, adjust me, realign me, God. If you're here today, and that's you, and you're ready to come under the covenant, on the count of three, will you raise your hand? One, two, three, come on, lift that up right now. Lift up that covenant cup as a sign of coming under it. Lift up the covenant cup. Get under it, get under it, get under it. God, I surrender. I am aligning now to your will for my life in every area. I surrender, God, all these hands up. I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and put those down. Can I pray this over you real quick? God, can you say it like this? Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Today I surrender. I come under your covenant. I come in alignment to your will. And I declare, Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior, my God. Thank you for forgiving me, for saving me. Change me, God. From the inside out, I'm yours. Go ahead and open up that communion cup. Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this represents my body that was broken for you. This is the price that was paid, the penalty that was paid and put on Jesus so that you would not have to bear the penalty, listen, of your history, of your habits, of your hurts. Because of the penalty that was put fully and completely on Jesus Christ. Will you take the bread? In a like manner, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood that represents the new covenant that is established upon what I did on the cross, not what you did after it. Come on, somebody receive that. God says, my relationship with you is established based upon what I did on the cross, not what you did after it. Everything that you do after it is under the blood. It's in the blood. The change, the, the transformation, it's in the blood. The mistakes you made, guess what? That too is in the blood. Come on, take the blood. It's not real blood. Stop it. Some of you freaked out on me real quick. God, we thank you right now. God, I pray right now that this season of consecration would be established, that you would speak uh, uniquely and specifically to every individual as we camp out before crossing God give revelation God give insight God the things that we've gotten too close to the old habits the old history the old hurts God we're not going to take them with us will you stand to your feet will you not get in a rush in this moment